Good afternoon, everybody. All right. Okay, then. So we are here once again for the new product launch, configuration and demonstration. Uh, so many people that I can see in the list I actually know. Uh, afternoon, Stu, Georgina, Walter, Douglas, Martin. Yep. Hi, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Right. Okay, then. So let's uh, break down into this afternoon's webinar. So uh, this afternoon, guys, we are going to go through the new product launch of the One Series Thermal Camera, the 16x9 Analog Camera, as well as Analog at TOC Technology. Now, for, for the people that don't know me, my name is Chris Flavell, and I'm the Post Sales Manager and Dedicated Trainer here at Dower Technology UK in Ireland. So, of course, uh, I only get involved in, you know, heavy-duty technical support cases, you know, beyond the realm or beyond the scope of the uh, technical team utilizing my background of 20 years of CCTV installs, or alternatively to this, that I can get involved heavily in product testing, dedicated training, and te technical tr troubleshooting scenarios, and I do an awful lot of stuff on LinkedIn. Now, if you're not joined with me on LinkedIn, please do, guys. I think you will find that it's extremely educational. And, of course, uh, everything in regards to product, new launches, uh, you know, how to, in fact, actually do this. I normally do that on LinkedIn. I, you know, I, we, we try to do, like, maybe a new demonstration video of something like maybe two, two times a week. take a little look see here right so we're going to use the kahoot app and then of course if you download that take a few notes throughout the course of uh, the next uh, 60 odd minutes or so and then of course what you'll be able to do is be in for a chance to win a lovely prize from dower technology now i'm not too sure what that is i know the uh, last prizes they were actually the product that we were talking about in question so of course uh, you never know you might in fact actually be in for a prize to win some free goodies okay you're going to need a You can jot down various answers, and of course, if you answer right, then of course you will get a freebie. I'm guessing. Okay, so I'll just leave that there for ten more seconds, guys, while you in fact actually take down those. Okay, just a few more seconds while the while that stays there. <coughs> okay, right. Let's continue. Okay then, and then of course our objectives for today. So of course, first of all, we have the analog 16 by 9 camera that we're going to show you, which is a revolutionary new style of sensor technology. We also have the ITC, the TPC one series, so a thermal protocol camera. So of course we have the small bullet here, extremely feature rich. We're going to go into that, and we also have the analog TOC camera here as well, which is of course obviously incorporating the three-in-one technology full color, artificial intelligence, and of course, active deterrent, okay? Right, let's take a look, see what one's first. Okay, so thermal solution introduction, right. Now, whenever we do thermal technology opposed to tripwire and intrusion on a standard, standard lens, then of course, thermal technology is a thousand times better than a regular multi-megapixel camera. So of course, like when we actually have like a uh, four series camera, then of course we could do tripwire and intrusion, maybe up to 15 or 20 meters. If we have a TOC camera, we can do maybe tripwire intrusion, smart motion detection, maybe 50 or 60 meters. However, prior to the model that you purchase, you can do tripwire and intrusion on thermal anywhere between one meter from the lens to four kilometers, okay? Cameras can in fact actually be as big as this bullet and the size of this table, okay? So of course, in this case here, it's a lot easier to study a heat signature going over a line opposed to the study of the multi-megapixel change, okay? So of course, in this case here, thermal is 10 times better. Thermal looks exactly the same as it does at nighttime as it does in the day. It has no aspects of environment light. It, it has no difference whatsoever. So of course, like whenever you're looking at the thermal view, 
if you had no date and timestamp, it would be impossible to know which one is which, day or night. That's impossible, okay? So, of course, a thermal will, in fact, actually always look the same way. So, of course, if you're doing a perimeter protection, wide open spaces, you do not need to second guess your education. If I use an IP camera with digitization, multi-megapixel change, long distance, short distance, I have to, in fact, actually assess in my brain, is that something over there that I need to be looking at? Well, this type of camera will report that, you know, there is a heat signature over there. And of course, it is radiating heat. And of course, as a which the alarm is going off. I barely need to do anything. OK, now all weather conditions, whenever it comes down to uh, thermal technology. So whenever you get like mist, fog, smoke, if you in fact actually had heavy rain conditions, snow, which is in fact actually what's happening now, then of course, like in this particular case, it won't play any difference. Thermal, it won't see any of that. It will not have any interaction to weather conditions whatsoever. Because of that, of course, obviously, we are bellish on the high accuracy. So, of course, it will always, in fact, actually be the good quality of service on thermal technology. And, of course, we also have the dual spectrum monitoring as well. This camera here, is, as small as it is, it, in fact, actually has two lenses, one visual and one thermal. It also has the active deterrent feature built in also, okay? So basically, you also got like, there's your regular five megapixel TOT camera. This is your four series bullet. You can see that it's a little bit bigger than a four series bullet camera. However, though, half the size of a TOT camera, okay? So of course, like in, th in this case here, then of course, it's a very powerful, small device, okay? Now, there's the perimeter protection topology, though, right? So, so, of course, one thing that we definitely, definitely need to um, remember is for artificial intelligence, we need to use DSS Express. PSS is only for four, eight camera systems, domestic in installations, you know, low key, low priority. DSS Express has the ability to, in fact, actually work interactively with the actual artificial intelligence and, of course, obviously the heat, the fire alarm. So, of course, if we ever use such artificial intelligence solutions, we need to use DSS Express. DSS Express has the ability to know the difference between whenever the alarm triggers on SMD, human or vehicle, it knows that. Smart PSS cannot do any of this. So of course, we're going to park Smart PSS for a while and focus on DSS Express. If you're not using the new app, which is DMSS, digital mobile surveillance system, then of course you should get on that one. It's the one that's got a blue icon. It almost looks like there's an eye in the center. There were days of GDMSS and IDMSS. They're pretty much over now, okay? Now, of course, we do recommend the 5 Series MVR, uh, 5 Series 4KS2 or the hyphen I for backend artificial intelligence, simply because of that encoding, decoding bandwidth. And of course, this is some pretty heavy kit. You know, our eight megapixel uh, TL camera, you know, that's some pretty heavy kit. And then, of course, we got two styles of the one series thermal camera. OK, so we have the bullet and we have the turret. So, of course, the turret would be around about this size here. Um, this is the actual action of the turret one. It would be around about the same size, made of metal, very strong. And, of course, the same for the actual bullet. We, of course, obviously have the illuminator. We've got the white light, two lenses. We also have a siren on any one of the versions as well. OK. Now, on perimeter protection, then, of course, we also focus on dead zones. Now, of course, when you're doing a perimeter protection, then, of course, it's no point, in fact, actually setting up a area that, of course, obviously can be beaten in the event that you have a dead zone or maybe you, in fact, actually have a gap in the fence, so on and so forth. So, of course, there's two styles of inst installation whenever you're trying to avoid de dead zones. One of them is using the correlation effect. And that's where you get two cameras and you look at the field, the same fields of view, which means I can see below this camera, I can see below this camera. And then alternatively, there is the loop effect, whenever they can in fact actually see the bottom of each other camera. And then of course they go around in a circular formation. Okay, so we've got correlation and we've got loop. Okay, this is how we actually avoid the dead zones. Okay, so of course there's a dome camera just off to the left-hand side of my head here. If I stand immediately below it, you can't see me. So, of course, obviously, that's not what we want for perimeter protection. Perimeter protection, you should see everything. Okay. Now, 
When it comes down to the actual camera, there is, of course, obviously unique algorithms to study the difference between human and vehicles. So, so of course, we want to get into the point of reducing the false alarm. So, so of course, like on TIOC, for example, they, in fact, actually have a 95% or 98% reduction in false alarms. So, of course, that thing will only ever trigger in the event it's a human or a vehicle. Okay, so of course, but because of that, we must match the installation parameters. We need to be in three meters in height, and of course, we want to be anywhere upwards of you know, like a 15 degree down angle. If you look, if you have it facing the top of your head, then of course, you know, the accuracy won't be as good. We don't want to obviously match the horizon because that may encourage you to bring it down lower. So, of course, you just want that camera just to be around about maybe 15 degrees downwards from the horizon. OK, and you can see from the actual uh, one series thermal camera, you can get somewhere in the region of like seven meters for the actual IVS, no, nine and a half meters for the temperature measurement. So, of course, like uh, even on a small bullet like this, then, of course, you can, in fact, actually cover quite a wide range. And of course, obviously, if you need to cover further, that means we just need to give you a bigger camera. Okay, no problem. Now, this is what the actual thermal camera will look like on your Internet Explorer. Now, lots of people will sit there thinking, really, IE? Well, of course, yes, definitely IE. Okay, so Smart PSS is not a configuration tool. DSSS is a video management platform platform tool. And of course, as of which, then good old fashioned Internet Explorer is a perfect configuration tool. And of course, lots of people will say, well, can I do that with the network video recorder? And I said, no, because in this case here, if it's a front end of artificial intelligent device, you should configure front end. Don't worry about the back end. Technically speaking, whenever it comes down to all of this technology here, then of course, a TO camera uh, TPC1 is actually much more intelligent than a network video recorder. It's just that the network video recorder can record for longer than what we can in the SD cards. So Internet Explorer is into the actual com camera's configuration. Okay, so this will be an example of the dual lens that we see. We can go into settings and smart plan, and then of course we activate the the IVS, so intelligent video system. And let's remember that, guys. Whenever it comes down to a camera freshly deployed from Dowager Technology, it is resource free because you could do people counting, you could do heat mapping, you could do IVS, you could do face detection. But of course, all of these coulds, you need to decide. Okay, you decide the resource of the camera. So, of course, if you just go straight into IVS and turn it on, do a tripwire, it won't actually activate until you go into the IVS. And of course, under smart plan, you switch it on. Okay, so lots of people, lots of technical support calls, done intrusion detection, not working, smart plan was off. Okay, so resource free, let's remember that. Then, of course, we can actually do the actual configuration and then we could do a box. And then, of course, we also have object filtering. Now, on that particular case, I'm actually going to spend some time here and show you that. So let's go good old fashioned Internet Explorer up. OK, let's bring that over here. Let's get the water bottle out of the way because I can't see. Right. OK, so IP address of my camera's changed. Let's go find out what it's changed to now. So. One series is now 516. 116. I was going to say that's more like it. No. Perfect. Okay, let's go. Okay, so there's my actual thermal camera. Now, one thing that um, we need to remember is thermal cameras, let's bring the cam camera back, right, thermal cameras use something called the fusion mode, okay? So of course, when we actually use fusion, we in fact actually are taking the two megapixel, four megapixel field of view from the visual lens and overlaying that, or probably vice versa, overlaying the thermal view on top of the visual lens. Now, if I was to actually turn that off, we are going to skip back many different generations here. So if I go into conditions on channel two and I turn fusion off, well, that's pretty much what just a thermal uh, camera looks like. OK, so of course, let's just take a look at um, the details of me in such a way. So what I do is I'd actually press save on that. Go back to the live view. 
Okay, so now we've now we've gone back. So now it's just a traditional thermal camera. Okay, you can see that this PC likes to struggle with that. All right, so I'll go into the actual settings, turn the actual fusion mode on. Let's go for this cool color fusion. Okay, so that's that looks good. Okay, now we should in fact actually see me in a different sense. Okay, very colorful, very uh hypnotic okay so of course in this case here then of course you can really see the actual difference of the actual heat signature within a thermal view okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into smart thermal go to smart plan i'm going to go to lens one okay so lens one is the visual press on save here going to go into ivs i'm going to do an add and we can activate now i don't like tripwire i prefer intrusion Okay, clear the area. I'm going to draw myself a new box. Perfect. That's why I prefer intr intrusion over tripwire because we also have the appear and cross. Uh, tripwire only has one of those. So, of course, uh, using the appear and cross and enter and exit, I, I believe it increases the ac accuracy. But take a look here now. So, let me just uh, zoom this in a bit. So, object filtering. So whenever I click on object filtering, I can actually select between a human and a vehicle. So I'm going to select human there. Let's bring this back down, press on save. OK, and immediately that will in fact actually reduce my false alarm count on a humongous level. Because like in this particular case here, uh, if it was any type of light differential, considering that it is just video motion detection in a specific area, then of course any type of light differential, environment factors, all of this will be removed because I've now said human. So let's turn the audio linkage on. I don't want it to go off five times, that's a bit extreme. And of course I want the little warning light. Uh, let's see, can we, and I think you should be able to see this and camera light up. I know that I'm quite small on the, on your web page there. Okay, well let's just uh, let's just give this a go. I think I'm all set up. And perfect. Okay then. So of course now this is the most important part. When we actually do this type of intrusion. If I got this camera at performance height, let's say three meters in height, for example, I can in fact actually do, for the first time, I can in fact actually do tripwire or intrusion on the visual lens and the thermal lens. So I can actually do a human detection on a thermal lens and if a thermal signature was coming to the field of view that moves, walks, talks, looks like a human is a human, then of course the alarm will go off. There is a very rare and small amount of cameras that can actually do that. But this little tiny bullet, which is only a little bit bigger than this little four series, this can do that. So, of course, with that said alone, it will change everything out there. No more false alarms. We've got no more false alarms on visual, and now we have no more false alarms on thermal. So, of course, in this case here, if it's an animal, it won't alarm. If it's an environment condition or lighting condition, it won't alarm. If a human walks in, boom, it alarms immediately. So, of course, as of which, now you've got the best of both worlds in, in fact, actually in a very small camera. Okay? It's going to sell well, guys. I know it already. Right. Let's uh, get that off the screen and let's uh, save some resources on the computer. Okay. So, let's how let's I'll go to, I'll go to Alarm. That's got no video view. Right. Okay. So, the fire prevention solution as well. So, of course, Fire prevention within itself, whenever you actually do it, like on a camera like this, then of course it's actually looking for, you know, the detail of the flame, how a fire works, for example. You could, could in fact actually say heat measurement as well, but then at the same time, we've got a slightly different model. I think it has a hyphen T at the end. And of course, it can, it can actually tell the temperature of something in, within the field of view at any one time. So you've got early warning systems, you've got high accuracy, um, danger behavior detection. So, of course, like uh, this camera has not two features, 
smoking detection as well as cold detection. Let me just bring that back in. Let me just show you. So settings, smart plan, IVS or cooling detection, channel two, IVS or smoking detection. Okay. Now, so of course it does cooling detection and smoking detection. We had to kind of inquire about cooling detection because it, did, it didn't actually occur to me until later on is that whenever you use a mobile phone and it's near like a uh, area, like a, a petrol pump, for example, I thought that, you know, had there been gasoline or petrol that we say in this country, if there was petrol on the floor and of course you drop your mobile phone, there's a possibility that on impact it could crack and make a spark. I didn't realize that the actual fumes from petrol within itself could in fact actually come around the phone into the circuitry and then of course ignite directly by the side of your face. I wasn't aware of this. So of course, like from, from there alone, a mobile phone in constant use can in fact actually light a flame um, just whenever it's just being a normal phone. So of course, as a witch, then of course the smoking detection, cooling detection, we will deem them now both as a danger of behavior detection. Okay, the dual, spe dual spectrum uh, monitoring again, of course, obviously we can, you, you saw it right there. We could do IVS on both lenses. We could do smoking detection one, on one lens and tripwire on the other lens. So of course, two cameras in one effectively. And of course, you also have real time alarm notifications. Okay. <clears throat> There's the actual topology for fire prevention. Uh, not not too uh, dissimilar like the last slides. Uh, however, though, what we're going to say is we're probably going to deploy these indoors, you know, in an indoor environment at least. And of course, we got much bigger, longer, further, more expensive cameras for possibly outdoor, definitely for longer distances, which I think you'll see today as well. OK, so this one will be the smoking detection. So, of course, that's going to be into the actual settings, into smart plan, like I showed you, into smoking detection and turn it on. Fire detection will be exactly the same into your fire warning and of course high temperature enable and safe and then cooling detection into the smart plan activate cooling detection go into the feature press safe and then of course on once again no problem there but I do actually have some videos that I can show to in fact actually show you both so now it's got no audio so I will do the audio commentary over them so let me just get, get this prepared so smoking detection here we go Okay, this is one of the videos that you would see on LinkedIn. Okay, so this is my next door neighbor. I don't smoke, I think it's a disgusting habit. But this is uh, my next door neighbor that's uh, helping out here. And basically what I've told him to do is to do a couple of things in front of the actual lens, just to in fact actually show on how accurate. Now, uh, I didn't have any, there was no rehearsals to this. This was just, you know, on the spot of these folk. And I didn't realize that it would be this responsive. OK, so I spent maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes um, wiring that camera up, you know, maybe a further 10 to get the Cat5 cable all the way to the garage. And after all of that, it fired immediately. OK, now my, my back garden, I think my back garden is around about maybe five meters to five meters square. So I've got a good field of view within it. And it doesn't matter where Danny is, the alarm will go off at all times. Now, I don't want it to go off for no particular reason you know what if you are holding a candle or something hot in your hand doesn't necessarily mean you're smoking so of course in this case here i as you can see the smoking he's got a cigarette it's tracking the cigarette but of course in this case here the alarm only ever goes off whenever it's next to his face and of course there you go it fires immediately okay now i'm going to jump to call detection Okay, this will be the call detection video, guys. Now, call detection is now you would have to uh, look close. Just take just take a quick look, close look. But do you see the blue square on the outer perimeter that is turning red? That's being generated by the camera every time that I use the mobile phone next to my head, anywhere within this field of view. I wanted to take a walk around the garden, you know, uh, hold the phone in different positions, for example. Okay, so trigger there. Okay, 
I wanted to get that sit down, stand up, left hand, right hand. I wanted to get those type of aspects. And as you can see, you can see I'm naturally right handed, but still triggering. You can see every time that I look up at the actual camera, I can hear the audible warning saying that, you know, you're using a mobile phone in an area that you shouldn't be using a mobile phone. So as a result, the alarm is going off. Okay, so now we've moved over to the left hand now. Okay, still firing. And then I think one more. Okay, so sit down, I'm not doing anything wrong. Pick up my mobile phone, damn near block the field of view or face detection in the first place. And wait for it, and it triggers again. Perfect. Okay, guys, so as you can see from such a very small device, we in fact actually have our smoking detection and our cool detection. We've got our IR, uh, warm light. We also have our cyber object filtering on both lenses. It's a very powerful device, okay? Okay, and fire prevention, another one, right? Okay, now for the actual industrial temperature monitoring solution, now this is where we in fact actually need to you know, take a care of like a uh, uh, high high aspect, you know, like high temperature um, parts, you know, of course, like uh, maybe electricity is always a good one. I, you know, I'm an electrician back in the day, so uh, so electrician is always a good one. So whenever you in fact actually monitor like uh, high voltage cables, you know, 2 kV, 4 kV, then of course it will obviously generate a certain amount of heat. And of course, what we want to do is we want to use cameras like thermal to be able to ensure that you know our heat is being controlled so of course we've got a high accuracy real time 24 7 monitoring because thermal cameras they, they don't take a break we've got the exception visualization where you can actually see that of course the hot spots within any one particular area and of course it is just a ptz or it's a ptz positioning device so it's kind of easy to deploy so you can see here this is going to be the actual topology, and you'll see that we've got DSS Pro this time. So we've got DSS Express, DSS Pro. DSS Pro is hardcore software server. And then, of course, we've got five series as MBR as normal. And then, of course, we've got PTZ or positioning cameras. Okay. And of course, we also have handhelds, but the PTZ positioning cameras, of course, obviously are going to be the better ones. Okay. Now, there's a video for uh, industrial in in introduction, uh, just a quick one, no nothing major, let's just take a quick look. Okay, so this is just an introduction video of what we can do and where we can deploy. But as you see here, so this is a PTZ positioning camera and we are looking at electricity to ensure that the current isn't too high. And of course, obviously, the temperature is outside of the threshold for the actual device that it was designed for. And uh, that, that PTZ will just go on all day doing that. We, we never need to worry until the actual alarm goes off. This one is configuration, guys. Look at those. Look at those hot spots. We've in fact actually targeted specific hot spots on specific presets, and then of course it's actually telling us the raw temperature of these electrical devices. In the event that one of them is outside of the temperature threshold, the alarm will fire. Look at that. that that's brilliant. And then of course it will just go on all day doing that. Perfect. Okay, and then of course the last one, which is long distance monitoring solution. Now, for me, long distance uh, I think is absolutely brilliant. Uh, this video coming up is is literally the next level. However, though, if we were to talk about something long distance, okay, so out at sea, out at sea is in fact actually long distance. So of course, when we're talking outside at sea, beyond the realms of you know infrared, you know incorporate in the actual thermal plus laser, then of course we can see a considerably long distance away. We can judge the distance, but then also judge the temperature. This is amazing, fascinating technology. So of course, uh, it's a probably a pretty big camera, I can imagine. But like if you needed it for the coastline, then of course this is the type of solution that you would definitely, definitely get.
Okay, so let's just, just take a quick look. We got all, me all weather monitoring, of course, because it's thermal and laser, long range monitoring because of the laser technology. Perfect. L target distance detection. Yep. Okay, so we can tell the difference between any one particular item at any particular field of view. Extra sensitivity sensor, well, that's because it's got like three of them. And then, of course, the AI intuition. So that's where human and vehicle classification. We, of course, obviously, you have to use a DSS, and that's a DSS server, that one, the C9100. And um, there's that, geez, there it is right there. Look at that thermal camera at the bottom there. Talk about next level. That's the type of thing that's like at the top of a building or a battleship or something. That's that's pretty hardcore. That they haven't given me to product test just yet. Okay, but we'll we, we get there. We'll get there. All right. But this is the long distance um, laser, laser thermal camera. I, I think it's brilliant. All right, let's uh, get that going. So long distance laser. Where is long distance laser? Let me just find long distance solution. There we go. Now take a look at this. This one is a fascinating. So of course, like he's, he's laser laser targeted that building, and of course, it's going to generate on the OSD a approximation guesstimation. So that one was 875 meters. Look at the depth of this thermal view. You can see all of the detail. 2,280 meters. Okay, tar target in that building. 7,245 meters. That is a brilliant. I think, I think that is and you just to be able to look look that far to be able to range thermal technology at that di distance is ridiculously cool. Okay, guys, so subject change over to the HTC VI. So, of course, that would in fact actually be this type of technology and this. So, of course, these are two five megapixels. This is the t technology. Now, there has been dis some discussions about, you know, Analog technology is it is it a worthwhile investment? Why don't we use IP and so on and so forth? Well, there's there's many reasons why to in fact actually use analog I, uh, over IP, and then of course so many different supporting factors. So of course, for example, uh, education education for the last 100 years for analog is still the same. It's you still have earth loop scrolling images, snow. You still got shadow effect. You still need to use a BNC. You still need to use a BNC crimp tool. You still have 75 ohms. The only difference on today's date right here, right now, is the actual sensor is in high definition. You still could do, you know, like a um, balance. You can still put, you know, a uh, coax down to core if you wanted. You still need 12 volts. So, of course, the technology is still the same, except for the fact that, of course, we're now pushing a high definition sensor of, you know, two, four, well, you know, five megapixels, for example. Now, some people will also illustrate to the fact that whoever's got more money could in fact actually make you know better cameras you know there's a giant argue, argument at the moment about you know home automation between google and amazon so whoever's got more money could do it better possibly that might be true maybe okay so some people might say oh they've got better ip cameras than us because they got more money i can only think of one other person than that but so i don't think i completely support that However, though, what I definitely, definitely do not support is that anybody has any better analog cameras than DAWA technology. I don't support that. For, I, I support that 100% simply because CVI, Composite Video Interface, was created in-house by DAWA technology. There's four major ones out there. So Composite Video in Interface, which was created by DAWA technology, one of the 2,210 paintings that we have, that was ours. You also have TVI, where some people will refer to it as the turbo range. We also have AHD, analog high definition, TVI's transport video interface, and we also have CVBS, which is standard definition. Okay. TVI, turbo, or whatever you want to call it, transport. Then, of course, in this particular case, that was created by TechPoint United States of America. AHD was created by the ISO in the United States of America. CVI was created in-house, DAWA technology. So, of course, in this case here, what we're going to do is we're going to do industry first and pioneer technology. 
We, we don't copy anybody. We, we make this as we see fit. If I, in fact, actually wanted a people count in Canva that could do the, um, you know, analog technology, I'm just going to talk to my product manager. I'm not going to talk to another company to, in fact, actually modify the code. Why would I do that? You know, this was all in-house. Okay. Now, on the actual analog side of things, then, of course, there are a couple of things that we can do that other people definitely cannot do. So, of course, autofocus, AHD and TVI. You zoom in and you press iris, iris, iris until it in fact actually focuses up. Every single DAWA CVI camera auto focuses on itself, okay? It does not need your assistance. You zoom in and then of course it modifies the actual lens and then of course it auto focus. Two-way broadcast audio. So of course, so none of this, you know, uh, bi-directional, omnidirectional, two ways. And then of course, our broadcast quality, the same way that you listen to KISS FM or BBC, then of course, in this case here, you can do that on a DAWA CVI camera, as well as the alarm input and output. A camera like this that has a 12 volt electrical one amp tolerant relay on the actual inside, you can connect your Texcom PIR, your Ajax PIR, if it's got, you know, normally open, normally close, and of course you can connect that directly into this and then have it go down the actual coax to let you know that your recorder has been tripped out by a third party device, okay? does not exist on any other brand except for Dower technology, okay? You've also got aspects like the Internet of Things, IoT, and that's where we do like a door, our own frequency of 433 megahertz. So we're doing door contacts, moisture detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, so on and so forth. And of course, like in this particular case, Dower again, no other analog camera can do this. And of course now they just take it to, uh, to the whole new level over time, over time and time. So PIR, power over coax, full color starlight, the telemetry, so no, you know, RS-485, it's all up the actual coax, coaxitron and such. So in this case here, DAWA technology and HDCVI is pioneering market leading technology, okay? So of course, when we do the actual TOC technology, we of course obviously have a three in one solution, full color, active deterrent and artificial intelligence. We've got full color and monitoring at all times. Now, of course, you may be able to see from the actual webcam here that, of course, we actually have multiple lights on the front and we actually have warm lights. Now, I just did a test just the other day. It'll probably be on LinkedIn soon, but I did a test just the other day where I was comparing this warm light with a street light nearby. And, of course, the street light, I personally myself found it was much more intrusive than the warm light given off the front of this camera. The warm light was not a powerful glow. However, though, to a five megapixel full color sensor, you could see everything, okay? Active deterrent, that's where we use the blue and red light to actually keep you at bay. And of course, with the assistance of the XVR, then of course, uh, I like the XVR hyphen I2 myself, with the assistance of the XVR, then of course, we can in fact actually incorporate good artificial intelligence. We can also use AI coding, so then that way we can keep the bandwidth and the storage capacity at the baseline minimum without jeopardizing quality, okay? Okay, so this is a, the topology for a TOC technology. So of course, DSS Express, because obviously the artificial intelligence. Then of course, we use DMSS. We use our AI XVR, so that would be any of the XVRs with a hyphen I on the end or a hyphen I2 to make it even better. And then of course, we got two types of TOC technology, five megapixels and eight. These are your devices. I'll just keep this slide here for a little bit longer than normal, just so then that way you can get your model numbers. And of course, obviously, with the assistance of the XVR, you're also using smart motion detection to reduce your false alarms, perimeter protection based on human in a vehicle, face recognition and AI coding. That's what AI2 is known for. It's very powerful for this aspect. I did face recognition the other day on AI2. So of course, like 10,000 10, faces and so on and so forth, you walk past, if it's your face, then of course, obviously you're allowed in. If a stranger walks by, then of course the alarm goes off, okay? Okay, five more seconds on that slide, guys. This is the actual active deterrent turret. This one here, this particular one. Okay, so that's how big they are. Okay, so bullet, bullet and then turret. Okay, now, whenever we talk about perimeter protection, we're not exactly in the habit of telling other installers on how to do their job, but you do kind of, in fact, actually need to follow 
the guidelines to installing a good AI camera. So first of all, immediately, you need to in fact actually ensure that you're approximately around about three meters in height. You want the actual down angle to be, you know, 15 degrees or greater. Of course, obviously zero is the horizon, 90 will be straight down. So of course you want that, you know, 15 degrees uh, upward angle or so. Okay, if it's looking too down on your head, well, how could it possibly determine if you're a human? So of course you kind of like want to look out at the actual elevation with a little bit down. Start at three meters. I did the actual testing for both to your cameras, IP and analog, and I noticed a considerable diff, uh, considerable difference in accuracy between two meters and three, only 100 centimeter difference, and of course a whole world of difference in the actual accuracy. So of course I'm sticking to my guns on that one, it's probably better to keep it around about the three meters in height, okay? Okay then, so this will be the active determined configuration, and I've got a few things to show you on that device. So of course we're gonna log into the device, we're gonna activate the actual uh, configuration, so that one is the uh, active deterrent, so we're going to this. And then of course now I'm gonna show you a couple of things as well as play with the interface. Now, in this case here, uh, the active deterrent, uh, red and uh, red and blue, that is a major power LED. Like um, on the webcam, you can see that it's this top one here, and it's tiny. However though, the power of it is next level, okay? Completely next level. So let me just show you this. Do, 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 do. All right, so this is gonna be right here. Okay, there's a suspicious character at the end of the footpath there. Oh, there we go, look at all of that. You're not gonna stick around for that, guys. In this case here, that is lighting your eye. I had to use this particular field of view to look at a brick wall, just so then that way it didn't light up the whole street. In this case here, here he comes. There's a dodgy Chris guy. Okay, in this case here, guys, it illuminates the whole area. Okay, so of course the powers of the actual active deterrent there. I did a trip wire, I based it on human, I broke the actual wire, and then of course immediately using the full color sensor, then of course it can say, Well, okay, I've seen somebody activate the actual red and what red and blue light, and of course the whole field of view was full of this light, and then of course that's it, you know, everybody. You know, there was a stage that people were looking out the window because they saw thought there was a police car out in the street, and it was just me testing this which is why I could only actually test it once, okay? Now, we also have mass detection, guys, so of course that's when we have this type of scenario going on, and of course, as it stands now for retail applications, it seems that we still need to deploy the actual mass detection, even though that, you know, we've got a vaccine, you know, heading towards us, some people are being vaccinated, and if you're the, if you're one of the late ones, you got to wait until September, all of that government nonsense. However, though, realistically speaking, social distancing and wearing a face mask, that could be easily into 2022. Okay. Just, just because you've been vaccinated, you know, it doesn't mean anything. So, of course, like in this case here, so, of course, you may need to, in fact, actually wear the face mask for a considerably longer time. As of which, then, of course, we need to ensure that you are wearing the face mask. So this is just a simple uh, video illustration. That's what I did. I had to remove the audio. Audio doesn't sound very good on a webinar, so we activated a light with the video editing team that was uh, with the help of Colin. So let me just uh, show you this now so you get a good idea. Okay, Colin just helped me with this early on. Right, no face mask. That was this camera, uh, this was yesterday. Okay, so at the moment it's just screeching away. Come back with a face mask and it does nothing. No problem. And because obviously, as you can imagine, it being back-end technology for face mask detection, then of course, uh, theoretically speaking, it doesn't matter what camera it is. It could be any camera. But of course, a teal camera does do it well because you've got the light and cyber. Okay, let me just show you around the actual XVR so we can in fact actually take a look at some of the features. So let me just bring this in. Okay, IP address is good. Okay, I know I don't have a hard drive, I don't need one. Okay, so this should be the live view. Okay, good, yes. 
Yep, we know about that. Okay. Okay, good. Right, let's do a couple of things then. So let's go into alarm. Alarm output port. Siren. I'm going to change it immediately to clip two. I like I like clip two. I, I think. That was a heck of a long five seconds. Well, okay, so I think um, clip two is perfect because of that uh, heightened level of frequency. You can definitely hear that at a good distance away. Uh, clip three here. Not too bad, but I'm still going for, for clip two. Okay, that, that's the one that actually has a good frequency. Now, because it's got a, a low audio that I put on the actual audio file, clip one is in fact actually for the first time a WAV file that I in fact actually upgraded and I I put it so then that way I use it for the mask detection and if I come into the field of view with no mask on this camera actually says the audio file please wear a face mask so let's just put it on I you might be able to hear it let's just see one more time let's get a click play Okay, so of course in this case here, I have taken from my actual laptop a please wear your face mask dot wav, and I have in fact actually imported it to the analog camera. So of course that file, that audio file is embedded in this device. Now I know for a fact nobody else can definitely do that. You know, audio files, digitization on analog devices. So of course like in this case here, that of course obviously another new feature to DAO technology that nobody else can do. So of course this is now reporting your own WAV files and you can decide, all you have to do is you have to match the actual format that I have. However, though, you can put any audio file that you see fit onto the actual analog camera. You can say things like, oh buddy, you know, get out of here, you're not, you're not coming in here. Okay, so anything that you wanted. I can use technology such as the mobile phone. Let's just take a look at this here now. Point, point this to that direction a bit there. Yeah, let's get some good old lights going on. Okay, blast away. Okay, we can use the actual mobile phone here. Let's go back into that. Audio out, siren. I'm going to change it back to, let's do two. I still like two. Okay, now I can use my mobile phone. So uh, let's see. So light off, siren on. Off, on. Light. Perfect. You know, like if I in fact actually see that they're coming, then of course, obviously, I'm just going to trigger them on my mobile phone. Nobody's going to be sticking around for this. Okay. Okay, guys. So in this case here, let me just show you one more thing. Just one, one more quick thing. Down into AI parameters, face detection, and then there we go. Right. Okay. So it's alarm type. Limited resources, okay, logged in too many times. But okay, alarm type, no mask, general, marks yes. So if I say mask yes, then of course we'll do anything. If I say mask no, then of course in this case, no mask, the alarm will fire, okay? Perfect. Okay then, and then moving finally on to our wrap up product is in fact actually the first time, I'm, I'm, I'm actually the first person to be holding these type of particular cameras. These are the brand new five megapixel 16 by nine view, okay? Now, of course, in this case here, that's whenever some people may refer to it as like a the real view, okay? So, of course, what you actually should be look like. Now, um, it probably doesn't show on a webcam. However, though, uh, my New Year's resolution was to not drink for a whole year. So, of course, it's in fact actually been one month and 16 very painful days. And, of course, obviously, the goal was to lose weight. Now, because of this traditional 5 megapixel 4x3 camera, which I no longer like simply because on how fat it made me look whenever it stretched a 4x3 view to make it look like 16x9, then of course I won't be getting any more of those again. 
So of course I will be focusing deliberately on the actual 16 by 9 5 megapixels. And of course the best part about using DAO technology for such a revolutionary new technology is of course nobody else has it. Okay? We decided to change the actual field of view dimension and resolution to be 16 by 9. Some of you remember widescreen. We decided to do that on an analog technology, which means that nobody else has this. It is impossible for anybody else to have it because 4 or 5 megapixels was in fact actually inevitably the field 4 by 3 view. We changed the goalposts. We did that. And now we have a real 16 by 9, 5 megapixel camera. Now, the video coming up, I don't much like, but let's just take a look. So, we've got 16 by 9 ratio, starlight technology built into the actual cam camera's head, larger fields of view, deep learning with the assistance of the XVR, and AI coding, once again, to save us our bandwidth and storage. Topology of the device, still going to keep with the SS Express, DMS, and the XVRI. And, of course, we actually have two of these models. Uh, we have five megapixels and eight, I believe. We'll see in a minute. Five megapixels, no, nope, just, just five megapixels for the moment. Okay, so five megapixel cameras that we have. And of course, uh, yes, that's what I meant to say. We, of course, obviously have the bullet, turret, so on and so forth. Okay, so the turret will be a little bit smaller than this one, not, not as big as this one. And then this part, this, this lovely part of the demonstration. Right, okay, so these are true, true videos. Uh, this is actually what we did here with two camera stands. We actually had this camera here just on the actual tripod and I do a open box presentation on it. And this one here right next to me. Now, as you can see, as you can see on the image on the right, on the four, four by three view, I have made no success with my non-drinking diet whatsoever. In fact, actually it looks like I've gone the other way. And of course, for some reason on four by three view, I'm no longer five um, five nine. I've actually shortened in height. Okay, so of course it's a it's a true video, guys. It's a little bit painful for me, I must admit. But like uh, in this case here, I can't see why. And of course, like some people would actually say, well, well why the hell was it in fact actually four by three in the first place? Excellent argument. However, though, of course, from now on, for me, I do a lot of analog solutions still to today, and I am only going to do sixteen by nine, mainly because of this video, actually. So let me show you. Okay, definitely. Okay, good. This is this is okay. This is okay. This is not good. This is not good at all. Okay, that's better. No. Oh man, that, that's bad. That's bad. 16 by 9 is a perfect camera. Look at that. Even those domes in the corner, in, in the PTZ on the, on the, in the background there, you know, they actually look, they almost look like, you know, rugby balls on the right hand side. The, the shape distortion on 4 by 3 stretched to 16 by 9 is extremely bad. It's 16 by 9, 5 megapixel all the way, guys. Okay, so 16 by 9, 5 megapixel cameras, bullet, turret, no one else has it, guys. It's a DAO technology first, and of course, in this case here, pioneer of analog solutions. Okay, I think just one more demonstration. Okay, so I've actually set up DSS. Uh, just a small time uh, set, up, set up, guys. Uh, you know, we're going to embellish more on the DSS call, uh, DSS more throughout the course of the year. And let's not also forget that uh, we, of course, obviously have DSS Express being uh, released this year in a certified course. So that's going to be the DHSP, and that's where you'll get a certificate for video management platforms and all sorts. So I just want to show just a real, real quick thing. It's just a little thing here. So I'm just going to load up DSS Express. This is how DSS Express actually looks, you know, way more advanced than Smart PSS. In fact, actually, Smart PSS is almost a thing of the past for me now. And of course, like we actually have all of our data. Look at everything we can do, face recognition, body temperature measurement, AMPR, attendance management, visitor management, e-mapping. You know, we've got everything that we need. We, of course, obviously have the live view. So let me just get a couple of cameras here. So 
there's our particular cameras, so there's our intrusion box that I added with Internet Explorer, and of course we have a simple trusty lighter. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just trigger this device. There we go. We're gonna get a couple of flashes. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so that, that must have triggered like uh, five or six times there. Yep, yep. Perfect. Oh yeah. Okay, so kill that off. Go into the event center there. Oh, resources, resources. Come on, computer, catch up. Oops. Enter here, uh, Aventor. Is it going to load? Oh, okay. I was pushing it, pushing it a bit too hot there. Well, right, okay, the webinar on DSS on one PC. <laughs> well, okay, so as you can see there, we got a good snapshot of the actual event going off. Uh, I didn't think I did it that many times. Oh, actually, I started this earlier on too. So, of course, like uh, as you can see, there's the actual event center history right there showing all of the times that I did this even before the webinar and of course you can see that it's just triggering constantly with the actual recording the snapshot the live view the map if you wanted and of course most importantly the record okay everything goes past ESS Express okay I think that's my side of it actually okay guys right so I believe Andy's in the other room there answering any questions if you wish so, of course, just um, fire towards me, guys. So, of course, we got Andy uh, answering any questions that you have. Now, while, while Andy's doing that, I will take this opportunity again just to remind that my name is Chris Flavel and I am on LinkedIn. You will find me there, post sales manager, training engineer, or training specialist, or dedicated trainer, one of the three. And then, of course, in this case here, guys, just contact with me and let me just educate you on a, on a, on a constant level. Okay. Right. I think we have the quiz. Okay, this is just a reminder of the quiz, guys. And I think I will call it at that and just leave it there. Shout out to all of my fellow installers. And of course, I noticed a couple of uh, gisties on there. Well done, guys. So of course, like uh, in this case here, guys, keep safe out there, um, you know, keep, keep protected, so on and so forth. And uh, I hope everybody remains safe. And I hope to see you on LinkedIn. And I hope to see you with the to DHSA, which is a dedicated course for the quality of service. DHSP, Artificial Intelligence, and the DHSE BMS platforms. Okay, guys, that's me out. So I'm going to mute my microphone, leave that there, and of course, I'll be on my way. Okay, thanks for attending. All the best.